what is going on YouTube coming back today with a video that I've been wanting to do for a little while so today I'm coming back with my bracketology and I wanted to do this video earlier in the week but I was on spring break so wasn't able to get that done um, but today I'm able to come back with my predictions for the round of round of 32 and the bracket I'm looking at right now is obviously not mine it's the best one left in the country right now and this guy has pretty much everything right except for Michigan State. And looking at this guy's bracket, I believe it's Trent J. Yeah, he made a couple. And um, yeah, really has all these right. And um, except for the Michigan State one, obviously, I think that one was the biggest killer. And then West Virginia also killed a lot of people too. But let's go over to my bracket. And um, I'm about right in the middle of the pack. Uh, it's had a few of them right. The Arizona loss really hurt me. The Cal loss really hurt me also. And so did the Michigan State. West Virginia I don't think hurt me too bad. Um, let me find West Virginia. I believe they're up here in the corner. Yeah, because I had them losing to Notre Dame. So if Notre Dame's able to win... I believe tomorrow, then that'll help me out. But get into the main part of this video, which is my round of 32 predictions. And uh, one of the games is already over, Miami and Wichita State. I got a good start to the day. Uh, Duke, Yale right now, it is 54-45, Duke over Yale. So right now it's looking like that'll be able to hold strong. Um, and then moving to the, the rest of my predictions. So I've got Kentucky over Indiana. Um, Indiana was able to get a big win against um, Chattanooga, and Kentucky was able to beat Stony Brook. Both those uh, games were in the round of 64. Uh, I've got Iowa State over UALR. Uh, Arkansas Little Rock able to get a big win over Purdue, um, win that screwed up a lot of people's brackets as well. Um, not many people expecting uh, Purdue to have such a letdown in double overtime. And um, Josh Hagens, the big hero for Arkansas Little Rock, putting up 31 points. So I do have Iowa State in that game. I don't know how long Iowa State's going to be able to last in this tournament with such a small rotation, though. So my next game, Butler and Virginia, I believe will be a very good game. If any of you guys know anything about Virginia basketball, um, over the past few years, Tony Bennett has led them to be one of the best regular season teams in the country, and they have really, really struggled to get out of the round of 32 in the tournament. I do have Virginia picked. I think this is the year they can get over the hump. They've got a lot, a lot, a lot of solid leadership on the team between Malcolm Brogdon, Anthony Gill, and London Parentes. That team has a lot of talent on it. It's very good defensively, and actually, I mean, not too bad offensively either. So, uh, the next matchup is a 9 versus 1, also UConn and Kansas. I believe this one's going to be extremely entertaining. Kevin Ollie has not lost a game yet in March Madness in the tournament. And Kansas is probably the clear-cut best team heading into the tournament and had a big win over Austin P, which, um, I mean, honestly, isn't that big of a win. UConn was able to stage or stave off Colorado in the first round. Colorado tried to mount a pretty furious comeback at the end of the game. So, I do have Kansas picked in that one. So, in my seventh game, I have the 11th seed Gonzaga against the 3rd seed Utah, and I do think Gonzaga will win that. Um, I think that is different. <coughs> That's the only one that I have different than I had on my bracket. Um, I actually did have Utah picked in that game. But I tried to stay true as good as I could, but I've just got a feeling about Gonzaga. They play very well against Seton Hall. And um, I think it's hard to go against them right now. So that leads me into my next game, which is Providence in North Carolina. Should be an extremely entertaining matchup between Chris Dunn and Marcus Page. Uh, Marcus Page, one of the better defenders in the ACC and is very underrated for his defending. Now, I think that North Carolina will come out on top. They're really starting to hit their stride right. Gave Florida Gulf Coast all they could handle. Um, I get it, it was a 1 versus 16, but Florida Gulf Coast is one of the best 16 seeds I've seen in a while this year. So, um, I think the North Carolina is going to come out on top. I actually do have them in my final four. So, at number nine, or my number nine game, I do have the second seed Villanova beating the seventh seed Iowa. Iowa was able to come out 
on top of a very close game against Temple. I believe it was yesterday. It might have been two days ago. So, my 10th game, I have the 14th seed, Stephen F. Austin, coming off a huge win against West Virginia, one of the biggest upsets so far this tournament, um, losing to the 6th seed, Notre Dame. Notre Dame was able to mount a pretty good comeback against Michigan last night and come out on top 70 to 63. So my num or my excuse me my 11th game I have the 10th seed VCU losing to the second seed OU. OU was able to come out on top against I believe it was CSU Bakersfield. Uh, Bakersfield making their first appearance in the tournament ever on Thursday. Now. Um, I think that it will be a good game to watch. VCU was able to beat a good Oregon State team yesterday, and like I said, should be an entertaining game to watch, see if OU can actually make it to the Sweet 16 this year. So the next game, I have probably the biggest upset, or probably the team with the biggest upset so far, which is Middle Tennessee State against Syracuse. Syracuse had a good shot against Dayton, was able to get a 19-point victory, 70-51. to I think... I really think that Syracuse is going to come out on top and be able to make the Sweet 16, something that didn't look very possible <clears throat> a few months ago. So next, I have the number 13 seed Hawaii taking on the number five seed Maryland. So Maryland was able to come out or come out on top of a close game against South Dakota State, 79-74 yesterday, uh, behind a big effort from Jake Lehman and. Really shot very well that game. Shot about 51%. If they can keep that up, uh, Melo Trimble was very solid from the line. Actually, the entire team was, really. And um, if they can keep that consistency up, I think they'll be able to beat Hawaii. Hawaii had a very good show out against uh, a little bit of a shorthanded California team on, well, yesterday. And Quincy Smith was able to put up a bit, or was, having a, was able to have a big game. So it was Roderick, ba Roderick Bobbitt tongue twister there. So I think the Maryland will come out on top. I think there's just a little bit too much for Hawaii to handle. Hawaii was able to run into a, like I said, a Cal team that was missing some big pieces, especially Jabari Bird. So they really had to rely very heavily on Jalen Brown, Ivan Rabb, and Jordan Matthews. And their star, Jalen Brown, just wasn't able to come through. One for six, four points through 17 minutes, and fouled out. So a little bit of a dud in that game, and I don't think that Hawaii is going to be able to luck out that much against Maryland. So Northern Iowa against Texas A&M. Northern Iowa was a team that I was very high on coming into the tournament. I had them picked against Texas, and they hit probably the best, or they had probably the best moment of the tournament so far with that buzzer beater last night. And I think that Texas A&M is actually going to come out on top. I think Texas A&M is just a little too much for Northern Iowa. Now, Texas A&M was able to come out with a win against Green Bay by almost 30 points, 92-65. to 65. Daniel House had a big game. Uh, so did, I believe it's Tony Trocha Mor Mor Morelos. Morelos. Can't even get that name right. So, um, I, like I said, I just think that Texas A&M is just going to be a little too much for Northern Iowa to handle. It will be a good game, though. Definitely one to watch. Now, Wisconsin versus Xavier, one of the best games of the day tomorrow, in my opinion. Now, Wisconsin was able to have, I believe they were in the lowest scoring game of the tournament so far, a 47-43 victory against Pitt. Um, just a pretty horrendous shooting game. Both teams shot below 40%. Uh, Wisconsin was able to take advantage of a few Pitt turnovers and was able to get a decent game from Ethan Happ while their two stars Bronson Koenig and Nigel Hayes struggled quite a bit shooting I believe a combined um, 4 of 25 so if that improves then Xavier will have a tough game and Xavier was really able to put up a good effort in the first round against Weber State with almost a 20 point victory 71 to 53 so my last game to predict is Oregon and St. Joseph's, the one versus eight seed. St. Joseph's was able to get a good win against Cincy. I believe that was last night also. Yep, 78 to 76. One of the most exciting games, again, of the tournament so far. Um, there was a dunk that Cincinnati had at the end of the game that I believe was not allowed. Um, they St. Joe's was able to get an extremely good game from one of the bigger, um, for one of the biggest underrated players in college basketball, DeAndre Bembry, and I think 
that this game will be able to put it put him into the spotlight a little bit more for the NBA draft. I think that he will be one of the more underrated players in this draft. All right, so one last thing I want to do before I end the video, and um, I just wanted to show you guys my final four. Uh, thank God it is still intact. I have Kansas OU and then UNC UVA. A final four that I believe can stay intact. Uh, looking at their paths for the rest of the tournament, Kansas will have a tough game to, or today against UConn. There might that might be their toughest test until the tournament. Now they're probably if they do make it that far, they're going to run into Miami. Most likely, they're probably going to run into Maryland as well. So games that are definitely manageable but not easy. Now if OU makes it, they will have to go through a pretty tough schedule of probably Texas A&M and Duke and then well either Duke or Oregon so not easy there but definitely uh, something they'd be able to do and UVA honestly probably the clearest path to the um, to the Final Four at this point they get through Butler they can get it probably will be in a tired Iowa State team or a UALR team that is um, just not not near as talented as they are. Uh, they already have Michigan State gone from that side of the bracket, so that is a huge victory for UVA. And then UNC does not have any bit of a clear uh, spot to the to the NC or to the uh, Final Four. They got to get through Providence with one of the best point guards in the country. Probably have to get through either Indiana or Kentucky, both teams that are extremely hot and playing extremely well right now. And then they've got either Notre Dame or Xavier, most likely. So, you know, and then in my championship, I have Kansas over UVA, 71-68. Like I said, I think UVA does have the clearest path to the national championship. Uh, have the two best teams from the ACC in one side and the two best teams from the Big 12, which amount to the two best conferences in college basketball. I think that would be an extremely entertaining Final Four. But that does it for my bracketology. I will be coming back with my Sweet 16 picks and update you guys with my bracket as we go along. And then when the Sweet 16 rolls around, I will do my, uh, see if I can find it here, nope, second chance bracket uh, to basically start from the Sweet 16. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. See ya.